Now, most plants reproduce through seeds, right? Uh, that's when we plant or the plant seeds fall into the ground and a new plant is born when the conditions are right. But before the seed is formed, there is this part where the male and female parts of a plant need to get together. That's sexual reproduction. That's sexual reproduction in plants. Uh, the flower is where you see this. Flowers contain male and re female reproductive parts uh, of the plant. Now, there are... Um... There are these parts inside a flower called anther and pistil. Now, there are flowers which have both these parts. Some have only the anther, some have only the pistil and so on. Things called pollen are present in the anther of the flower. And then you have the pistil which has three parts, the stigma, style and the ovary. Um, so I think the pollen need to be sent from the anther towards the stigma for the plant to make seeds and fruits. I get these are the reproductive parts or reproductive things inside of a plant, right? That helps make new plants. Perfect. Yes, 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 you're right. This is called pollination. Now, nature uses some very interesting ways to make the, the magic of life happen, you know? Uh, you know how you've seen uh, honeybees or some insects that are buzzing next to flowers? Now we think it's because they are there to eat the sweet nectar that the flower is making. But there is something that happens unknowingly. What they are doing is they are picking up the pollen from the anther. Now the pollen is the male sex cell in a plant if you will. Now the pollen cells are picked up by these insects and taken from one flower to another by the insects, right? And the ovary contains the female sex cells of a plant. Now when the male sex cell and female sex cell come together, and this is what we call fertilization, that is when the seed gets formed and now a new baby plant can be born. Wow! It's like the plant is using insects to make new plants and the insect use the plants for food. That's like a win-win. This is beautiful. Right, right. And, and I do know that us humans, we have, um, you know, helped plants reproduce in very creative ways as well. Of course, we do this so that we can get the right kind of plants that we need, right? Many plants do not rely on flowers and sex cells to make new baby plants. In fact, some of them don't even have these sex cells which can fertilize, right? Right, so that's why vegetative propagation is called asexual reproduction in plants, right? Because they do not have the need for sex cells. Right, right, perfect. So now, such plants have a very special way in which they can reproduce without pollination and fertilization. Now, take a carrot plant, for example. Now, you've seen a carrot. If you cut off the top half of a carrot and you know uh, throw the bottom away and stick the top half inside water you will see that after a while it starts sprouting leaves and after a while this whole thing will grow into a fully grown carrot plant in itself now, of course you've got to provide the right conditions and this isn't a unique case to carrots this can be done with other root based plants like say the beetroot as well it's, it's not even a unique case to uh, roots-based plants. Uh, potatoes and ginger are very good examples of plants which are stem-based, right? They reproduce in a similar manner, except not the root, the stem is what we use. Now, the stem is sown into the ground and it grows into a new plant. If you like this video and if you want to watch more videos like these, hit like and subscribe to the channel. If you enjoy learning this way, download Baiju's, the all-new and personalized learning app.